Dance Your Heart on Fire podcast episode number 55. No, I mean, I've always loved the music. Like, it was just the fact that I, like, literally saw Zook before. Um, th- before I saw Kizamba. And I was like, I was always thinking that Zook is going to be the big thing, you know, because it was like a lot more happening. It wasn't, you know, like I saw Kizamba and I was like, that's hella walking. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> even? Like, I was like, you're not doing that much, though. Um, and of course, this was way before Urban Kids and exactly. all of that. Uh-huh. So, I mean, it was it was a lot more like, you know, it was the traditional Kizamba, like exactly. a real pure Kizamba. Mm-hmm. So I was like, I don't know what this is, but I'm, I'm, I was sure, I was like super convinced that whatever this is, Zook is going to beat it. You know, I mm-hmm. was like, Zook is the thing. Um, but <laughs> little did I know <laughs> <laughs> that Kizamba was going to be huge. Uh, but once I started dancing it, I, I just fell in love with it because it was just so different from salsa and bachata. You couldn't anticipate anything, you know, and it was like you were just in the moment in a whole other way. And that's still how that is still how I think of it. Oh. Welcome to the Dance Your Heart on Fire podcast, the podcast dedicated to inspiring dancers worldwide whose hearts have been touched by music and dance. The universal language of dance and music is spoken by many of us throughout the world. We want to motivate the dancer in you by sharing stories, insights, and ideas to enhance your journey. Join us now with your host, Charles Ogar. Hello, hello, everyone. This is Charles with the Dance Your Heart on Fire podcast coming at you with another episode. And this week we have another talented dancer that I've had the pleasure of meeting with and talking with um, a few times in Sweden when I was there um, the last two years. But um, this particular person is super, super talented, super humble, like, wow, like, I travel a lot, I meet a lot of different dancers and this particular dancer is like always surprises me because she's really, really good looking. But aside from that, she's also really, really, really like down to earth and humble and it's always a pleasure to meet her and dance with her. So I want to introduce the none other Mrs. Teresa Jimenez. (laughs) Hi. Well, first of all, thank you for those kind, very kind words. That's very lovely of you to say that. (laughs) And uh, it's such a pleasure to be doing this podcast, finally. We've been talking about this for so long, but we have never get around to it. Yes, I don't give up. I'm like persistent. Like, (laughs) hey, Teresa, how you doing? What's going on? How about that podcast? (laughs) (laughs) But I get like our dancer life is crazy. So it's really, really good. Yeah. Yeah, it's nice. And I think it's so cool of you to actually do a podcast uh, about Kizomba because it's needed. And it's so nice to uh, like let other people know that even even if they're not dancing Kizomba or if they are or if they're dancing something else, but like to acknowledge things that are happening and bringing up subjects and artists and yeah definitely podcast is so important because i see yeah, so many really facebook cool. posts yeah like somebody will post something yeah. and then there's like 257 comments under there but it's yeah, like exactly. some some of the information is really really nice like i wish yeah. like somebody would take some of those comments and like make an article or a blog post that's yeah. on a website because it's easier exactly. to go back and retrieve that you know i'm not going to go back and look for a post a month ago yeah. and then scroll down 259 comments to go and find what that person yeah. said, you know? Yeah, that's for sure. Yeah. So, yeah, so. It's, it, I think it's important to kind of have these nice conversations on a, on a more open and public platform, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And plus, you're a super cool person. So that helps. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it doesn't hurt. You definitely. Thank you. Thank so. you. So for those people who may not have heard of you before this podcast, can you go ahead and tell our audience what you do in the dance world today? Yeah, I mean, uh, I do everything within the Latin world, more or less, I guess you should say. But I'm mostly more focused in Kizomba and the Kizomba world. Uh, as for from when I was partnered with Christopher Mensak and then I've been partnered with Ena Lebon. So mm-hmm. with that, I have been doing more Kizomba than anything else. But I 
before that and even after and, and in between I've been doing stuff in salsa and in the chata too uh, I started with salsa actually so I always say that that was my first love mm-hmm. and then <laughs> it just you know it got to be like that that I just came in the Kizama world and I haven't left since <laughs> do you feel <laughs> that you it. chose Kizomba or Ch- Kizomba chose you I really feel like Kizomba chose me or I mean I guess we both <laughs> chose each other, uh-huh. but um, no, I definitely feel like it started with Kizomba like presenting itself to me um, as for a matter like I just uh, got to try it out like like literally like blindfolded mm-hmm. and I just, you know, started following since I danced salsa and bachata before. I guess I had a sense of like knowing how to follow uh, and then I just heard like, oh, you, you, you kind of like feel this dance uh-huh. um, style. And I was like, really? Like, what is it? <laughs> like, I didn't even know. Nice. So. Okay. Well, yeah. we'll, we'll get into the story there and all the juicy yeah. details of <laughs> how you got started. Details. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I like to let people know, like, be obviously you're known in the dance world and things like that, but like you're also a normal person and things like that. So um, can you tell our audience like where you were born and raised and things like that? Of course. Uh, Well, I was born and raised in Sweden, Stockholm, uh, AKA Ikea land. (laughs) 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 That's what people know about Sweden. It's like Ikea. And then like some people know that Spotify is from here. Oh, Um, I didn't know that. See, you learn something every day. <laughs> and what's the special uh, no. berries that you guys have? The they have this particular the berries, Swedish yeah, we have berry. berry. Yes, the lingonberry. I always get the lingonberry, the lingonberry juice berry. when I go to IKEA. Yeah, and we call we have something else called yuktron, but I don't know what the name is. And I think it's like a wild berry mm-hmm. uh, kind of thing. Um, but yeah, we have a lot of berries here. Uh, we love the woods. <laughs> nice, nice. Um, and uh, my parents are my my mom she's swedish and my dad is cuban so i'm half cuban so I, i've been like born and raised here but i definitely have a lot of cuban in me like growing up <laughs> mm-hmm. i um, remember we were t- talking in spanish one time in sweden oh, yeah. and you're imitating like a cuban accent and it was oh, yeah. so <laughs> hilarious <laughs> can you do a little bit for it because no. you were like you were oh you were now saying like you, <laughs> you were saying that you have to like put like a potato in your mouth and then like yeah, speak Spanish. Yeah, pretend <laughs> that you had a potato in your mouth and then try to speak Spanish with like a vulgar attitude. <laughs> like that's it, you got it. Just like you know, just pretend that there's a big potato in there, and you'll you'll be Cuban in a second. Uh huh. So funny. <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway, so, so yeah, so your mom is Swedish and your dad is Cuban. How did your dad end up yeah. in Sweden? Well, my dad is a musician, so he's a violinist, and he was on a tour um, from like he, he was traveling with a band, and then they had one of their like concerts were here in Stockholm, mm-hmm. and blah blah blah. He met my mom. <laughs> Long story short, um, they fell in love. It was very corny. And then, <laughs> then, yeah, like within a year, I came to the world. So, oh, wow. Yeah, it was really like intense. <laughs> and then my dad actually like, well, he decided to like stay here and, and they lived together. And then they got divorced uh, when I was like five. Mm-hmm. Um, and then ironically, since my mom, she speaks fluently like Spanish. Mm-hmm. And um, so and she got like, you know, to be around a lot of Cubans with like uh, being together with my dad and mm-hmm. such. So after they broke up, she met another Cuban, ironically. <laughs> <laughs> from yeah, so from the age of five, she she is still together with my uh, stepdad, which nice. is also Cuban. And so they've been together for like twenty years now. Oh wow! And so yeah, that's cool. Yeah, so that's awesome. I definitely yeah, I've had a lot of Cuban influence in my life. That's nice. That's nice. Uh, that's nice. Have you ever got a chance to yeah. go there yet? 
Yeah, yeah, definitely. I've been there uh, two times. Um, it's been long, though, since I was there last time. So I really definitely want to go. I haven't gone since I started dancing, which is crazy. Mm -hmm. um, so I really want to go there and like and dance. That would be so cool since last time I was there, it was just I was doing music back then. So I was very into music and mm -hmm. about that but not dancing so that'd be cool and then of course meet my relatives and yeah that would be all awesome of that. yeah so that kind of ties into the next question that i was going to ask you um what yeah. is something that not a lot of people know about you yeah that you're well, willing to share <laughs> <laughs> well yeah uh, about that no, <laughs> <I'm kidding. laughs> uh, no but definitely the music thing is that it's the one thing that people are so surprised with um that for me it really started with music like my if i always say like if my life were a book it would be named music because like my life has always been about that like from the age of four or five i started playing the violin and um because of my dad he's a violinist so and also like everybody in my family they're musicians like both on my dad's side and also on my mom's side actually uh, except her and she's a psychologist so it was kind of funny um but then yeah i started playing violin and uh, I, I was playing that my whole life and that was like my life's purpose uh for, i went to a private school like a russian private school and i got a scholarship to go to uh moscow tchaikovsky conservatory when i was like Oh, wow. 15 or 16. Tchaikovsky uh, is one of those important classical guys. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> and But that was kind of when my interest for dancing started like growing, at least in my mind. Like I always wanted to dance, but I wasn't really allowed at that time because my life was all about the violin. And, but then when I started high school, I started to... Uh, uh, or like when I turned 18, um, I I just like I couldn't wait to start dancing, and I just went out and I started salsa dancing, mm -hmm. uh, and then yeah, the rest is history. So it just took over. It was like once I started dancing, there was no way back. <laughs> nice, nice, and nice. I still have music with me. I play the piano, I play the violin, and I play from time to time. But yeah. I was going to be like a solo artist, uh, like a violinist. Oh, wow. People don't know that. Yeah. It's kind of funny. <laughs> you should make like a Kizomba track then. <laughs> yeah. Everybody's saying that. <laughs> or that I should like dance and play violin at the same time. Mm -hmm. But we'll see. We'll Do see. some like <laughs> lady styling and exactly. violinist at the same time. That'll be an interesting <laughs> yeah, niche. Yeah, why not? <laughs> <laughs> that, that would be your first anyway. <laughs> so, That's yeah, awesome. That, That's awesome. that would be one thing. And that I have a dog. I don't know. Maybe people know that, but I have a dog. Maybe they follow you on Instagram. What kind of job? Do you, exactly. What kind of dog do you have? Uh, well, it's both a job and a dog. <laughs> <laughs> uh, her name is Chiquita. So she is very Chiquita. She's a small little girl, and I always say she's uh, the only thing that is tinier than me and uh, has, uh, and she's wider than I am. So, <laughs> like I always say that. I got. I had to get something smaller and tinier yeah. and lighter than I am. Nice. Uh, so, Hence yeah. your name, Snow White. Yeah. Hence my name, Snow White. Exactly. Who came <laughs> up with that name, by the way? Uh, I actually, my family has been calling me that since I was like a little baby. Oh wow! Because uh, yeah, because my sisters they are half Israeli, and, like we share the same mom but not the same dad. Mm -hmm. And so I, I have always been like the lightest one of us, uh, of the, the three of us. Mm -hmm. And also like, even I'm, I'm light, I'm more light skinned than my mom and everybody. So they always called me Snow White cause I had dark hair mm -hmm. and red lips. <laughs> they always said, and they're really light skinned. So it started like that. And then, and I started calling me Snow White and then that was it. <laughs> Nice, nice, uh, nice. When I started Kizamba, yeah. So before we start getting into your history of, of music and dance, um, you said you were accepted to that school 
um, with the Tchaikovsky guy. Was that like yeah. college? Was that university level or like was that like a high school no. for the performing well, arts kind of thing? Or yeah, more like that. It's a conservatory, so it's actually for all kinds of like ages. Mm-hmm. Uh, I should say, uh, but no, it wasn't. Uh, I mean, I wasn't that old yet, so it wasn't college or university really. It was just um, I was there for a summer, so it wasn't <laughs> uh, that long that I was there, but. Um, uh, I haven't actually gone to university uh, or college um, yet, mm-hmm. I should say. I'm still a baby. I'm 24. So oh, wow. <laughs> I should never say never. <laughs> yeah. So I, I kind of started dancing like straight away after mm-hmm. high school. And I just, you know, I just fell in love with it. And that has been my main focus since then. I got you. So. What would you study if you were to go to university? Oh my god! I think it's I think it's better to like go and like when you have a better idea of like what who you are in the world and what you want versus like because I have so many friends that went to university and then they choose something to study and then they change their mind like three times. So it's like yeah, well just figure yourself out first and then choose what you want because I mean just because you switch your mind doesn't mean that they're gonna get a refund on what you pay for those classes. You know exactly. No, but definitely, like, the only thoughts I've had on that is uh, psychology, because I really like psychology, and I find it really interesting. Um, so that has been the one thing that I've been, like, leaning into, like, to study, I guess, to... Um, um, but no, I'm not sure yet. <laughs> no rush. I mean, you, you have time. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah. So let's talk about boom. Japun, Japun, Kizomba, and <laughs> yeah, to Kizomba. Let's. I said. I guess you said that you were your partners with Christopher Mankak, and I know he's been around for a long while. So, was did, yeah. what is, did he have something to do with your first introduction to Kizomba? Uh, definitely. I mean, we kind of like he started with uh, um, like when Kizomba just like started in europe at Mm -hmm. least like when they were like before kizamba festivals even Mm -hmm. then like this was back in 2012 i think Uh, and he started like um going around uh festivals with a friend of his uh to explore this kizamba dance and he got into it and then he came back to sweden and he just like I just, you know, I, I was familiar with the music, but I actually knew about Zouk, like Brazilian Zouk, before I knew about Kizomba. Oh, wow. So I was like, this is Zouk music. Like, what is this? You know, and then I, you know, I just saw people in the party, like, dancing this other dance. And I was like, what is this? Mm-hmm. And then he just grabbed me and it was like, because I knew him from before. He mm-hmm. danced Cuban salsa before that. Uh, okay. people don't, I don't think people know that, but he always, like, he danced Cuban salsa for, like, ages so I knew was him he a teacher before. already he for Cuban me. or just like a dancer? No, no. He was just like a social dancer. Yeah, definitely. Gotcha. Uh, but I knew him from before. So he just grabbed me and it was like, well, just try to follow. Like, like, just close your eyes and just try to follow. And then I did. And he was like, oh, like you, you are so like uh, easy to lead. And like, yeah, he just, I don't know. He just saw potential in me, mm-hmm. I guess. And then, uh, actually, from there, we started kind of quick. Um, really? Uh, quickly he just from swooped there. you up? Yeah, it was like that. I mean, we were friends from before, and mm-hmm. we both lived in Stockholm, so, I mean... Makes uh, sense. Yeah, so we both, like... Uh, or he came up with the idea. He was dancing with Lisa first, uh, a, another girl from Sweden. Mm-hmm. But then he came up with the idea, like, oh, do you want to compete in Africa Dansai? And I was like, yeah, why not? I mean, so... <laughs> La di da di da, competing in Africa. Yeah, exactly. So I was like, you know, I don't even know what it is, but it sounds like fun, you know. So uh, that was back in 2013, Mm -hmm. uh, or no, 2014, sorry. And then uh, we won the Scandinavian Championship in Denmark. Nice. Uh, And then we continued to Africa Danzar in Milano, which was 2014, and we got sixth place. Very and nice. yeah, and then like from there, we we were like partners, I guess, officially, and we did a couple of videos that <laughs> a lot of people have seen on YouTube. The one in the yellow tunnel. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm gonna share that in the show notes for the people. Oh Lord! <laughs> oh my God! 
I have such a hard time watching that video nowadays, but yeah, people like it's it. Pro- it's progress. It's progress. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, you should always be proud of your progress. I'm, I'm not saying that. But anyway, so we started as partners, um, and then we went our separate. We actually taught together, um, both at the studio that I'm teaching now, Stockholm Salsa Dance, and mm-hmm. also um, at Kizamba Flow, which uh, like. Uh, he's still doing now like as his brand um so we we were teaching classes together and then we went our separate ways and i was doing uh, more bachata at that time in mm-hmm. between and then after the bachata period of my life <laughs> i um uh, got in a partnership with Anna. Mm-hmm. and yeah it's been uh, it's been fun since since it's been a lot since then yeah definitely so much yeah so i want to backtrack just a little bit you said that you saw brazilian zook before kizomba so what what was it chris since was it that the fact that christopher kind of swooped you up and you guys went to compete that made you choose kizomba or was there something else about the kizomba dance that attracted you no, I mean, I've always loved the music. Like, it was just the fact that I, like, literally saw Zouk before, um, th- before I saw Kizamba. And I was like, I was always thinking that Zouk is going to be the big thing, you know, because it was like a lot more happening. It wasn't, you know, like, I saw Kizamba and I was like, that's hella walking. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> even? Like, I was like, you're not doing that much, though. Um, and of course, this was way before Urban Kids and exactly. all of that. Uh-huh. So I mean, it was it was a lot more like you know, it was the traditional kizamba, like exactly. a real pure kizamba. Mm-hmm. So I was like, I don't know what this is, but I'm, I'm I was sure I was like super convinced that whatever this is, Zook is gonna beat it. You know, I mm-hmm. was like, Zook is the thing. Um, but <laughs> little did I know <laughs> <laughs> that kizamba was gonna be huge. Uh, But once I started dancing it, I I just fell in love with it because it was just so different from salsa and bachata. You couldn't anticipate anything, you know, and it was like you were just in the moment in a whole other way. And that's still how that is still how I think of it. Um, And of course, I love the music and I love the uh, well, of course, people that know me from before, I love Urban Kiss because mm-hmm. they're like, there are no rules to it and you can just do whatever you want. And then then there's no counting mm-hmm. of like, you know, I always call Kizomba as Tetris. Like I always make that uh, resemblance because <laughs> it's just like, uh, you know, uh, you just put it together the way you want it exactly. and the way you want to shape it. You don't have to count in eights. Mm-hmm, uh, as we do in other dances so i really find it like so uh, liberating because there are really no no limitations in kizamba definitely uh, so yeah that's that's how i find kizamba really nice. awesome let's take a quick moment to thank our sponsors have you been looking to level up your kizomba but you don't have the local instructors to take you there are you looking for something concrete to practice with your kizomba partner Or are you looking for Kizomba lessons that you can take on your schedule and the comfort of your home? If you answered yes to any of these questions, look no further. LearnToKids.com is what you need. Progressive, step-by-step lessons that you can take at your pace in the comfort of your home or anywhere with a solid internet connection on your PC, Mac, or any smartphone. New videos are added every month. You can try this awesome resource out 30 days free at LearnToKids.com slash podcast. After the 30 days free, it's only a low $15 per month. But again, the special offer for the Dance Your Heart On Fire listeners, 30 days free at learntokids.com slash podcast. You won't find this offer anywhere else. Learntokids.com slash podcast. And now back to our show. Yeah. So God, I'm talking so much. <laughs> no, but I mean, this is your podcast. You're supposed to be talking. This is what we want. We're having everybody that's listening right now is having a cup of coffee with you right now and just asking you questions and just smiling at you while you're, yeah. while you're sharing your story. Hope you're enjoying your coffee. man. <laughs> <laughs> but this is this is the whole purpose of like the podcast. You know, like people have seen videos of you. Like how long has the video of you and Christopher been out in the yellow tunnel? For years, yeah. Oh, yeah. People have taken your classes yeah. in workshops and things like that, but like nobody's gotten the chance. So I guess I guess very few people get to like actually sit down, and like yeah. ask you questions 
for like about half yeah. an hour, you know? So that's the cool thing about the podcast, you know? Yeah. That I got to mention that. That is so funny because you are not the first person to tell me like, uh, like being surprised that I'm not this diva or like that I don't have this attitude or yeah. that I'm smiling and talking to everybody. Wait, did, did, you get that, that. did you get that yeah. from your, like the way you were raised with your family or just your view on the world or? No, I have no idea. Like to me, <laughs> I don't even, you know, I don't even relate to me ever like, you know, thinking of myself as a, as better of any, than anybody else, really. So for me, it's really weird when people tell me that. Like, when people are so surprised, I'm like, yeah, but I'm, like, why wouldn't I be? Like, I don't see the reason why I wouldn't be. Yeah. Uh, so I, I couldn't even answer that question, really. Yeah. <laughs> but, but I, I mean, I it's it like... So funny, like, when I met you, it was the same thing. So. Yeah, because, like, you see super pretty girls. Like, if you guys haven't seen Teresa in person, guys, like, <laughs> make sure you oh. have, like, a towel nearby to, like draw the <laughs> any drooling that may happen or anything like that <laughs> nah. but nah, you're being too on top of now. that no i'm serious like on top of that like the like you're on the so if if diva and like down to earth were on two sides of the spectrum like i don't even think like you have a drop of diva in you you know no maybe when you're doing so a demo sweet. with and i like you, you let the swag come out <laughs> something like that oh but, yeah he makes me <laughs> But other than that, it's like, and it's not just the way that you tr- that you treated me, but like the way that you tr- you treated everybody. It was the same, you know. So it's yeah, not like you're trying cute. to like kiss up to anybody or anything like that. It's just like just being down to earth yeah. and humble. So it's nice. Well, I find it really important that everybody does that. Like, no matter what position you have, that you should always like try to stay humble and be thankful for for everybody that you have around you because you will always learn something from everyone, no mm-hmm. matter like, what position they have or that you have. So that's awesome. just how I see things, I guess. But I really appreciate you you uh, feeling like that and getting that impression of me. I really appreciate that. No problem. So <laughs> um, one thing that I always like to do, um, because like you were saying before, when we're talking about the dancing and, and the role of the follow and things like that, following is not easy. And especially in urban kids. Yeah. So yeah. Um, I have I would like to pick your brain and I'm pretty sure our audience would like to know as well with your experience with Christopher and with Anna and traveling and like winning the championship that you mentioned before. What would be the top two? pieces of advice that you would give to a follow who is learning Kizomba? AKA yeah. or urban kids. Like just, just put it all or together. Or urban kids, yeah. yeah. <laughs> just in dancing in general, mm-hmm. actually. Uh, or as a follower. Uh, I mean, uh, for Kizomba and urban kids specifically, I would say um, keeping your own ba- balance. Like you have to remain to keep your own balance and not rely on the guy uh, so I always say like like beginners tips that I always um, give is like stay underneath your own hips and keep your own balance. Um, take small steps. I mean all of that. Like I would my my favorite expression that I use in my classes is like um, the smaller the 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 steps or like the more balance you have, the bigger the dance will be, like the, the greater your mm-hmm. dancing will be. And cause it's really like that. Like we always, we all know the expression less is more, but um, it's like, I find it like the more control you have of your own balance and the size of your steps and like uh, the more movement you can add to it and the more sassiness you can, you can have. I mean, like, um, Cause it's when you rely so much on the guy, uh, like in Kizomba, there's a, unfortunately this myth that, oh, as long as I have a guy that's good, a good leader, I can just, you know, do whatever, you exactly. know, like just, uh, so, and that is so not true. Like there's so much responsibility in being a follower and, uh, yeah, that is, that is one of them. And then second, uh, is well, it's related to that, but that is uh, not to anticipate because in Kizomba and in Urban Kids, that is like what's going to make you like fall to the ground like, mm-hmm, for sure. uh, or on your partner. <laughs> yeah, that but, happens. Um, yeah, it happens. Uh, and also like try to so don't anticipate and try to like if you want to be um, 
uh, using your musicality, do it in a way and your styling like as a as a follower mm-hmm. uh, lady styling and such do it in a way that doesn't uh, interrupt the actual dancing together part because you're still dancing together so i know all these girls that are so like good followers even and great dancers but like it goes out of hand when they're trying to make it their own dancing and not just like try to focus on dancing together and this is both for guys and girls I mean, like, try to meet your partner halfway. Exactly. So you can both express the music. Yeah. Excellent advice. So now <laughs> let's you. give two pieces of advice for the leaders, because I'm pretty sure a lot of you dance with a lot of leads. And I'm pretty yeah. sure. And I know sometimes it's, it's tough. I don't know. I feel like women are more receptive to re- receiving feedback than the guys are sometimes. And it's easier mm-hmm. for the guys to kind of like, well, I lead, I, you follow, you're supposed to do what I say kind of thing. And then yeah. they miss the opportunity to help kind of polish their lead and make it even better, you know, in, in different aspects. So, yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, there are different kind of I mean, there's so many different kinds of leads, mm-hmm. just as there are different kind of followers. But I mean, like as a leader, it's so different because you you guys have your each one of you have your own style and like connection or if you like to have connection with your chest or if you're more urban and you have your frame like in more in your arms or like if you lead with your thighs or legs or feet or you know so it's, it's so different uh, but i would definitely say in general um for urban kiss specifically that your left hand as a guy uh, don't doesn't always have to be tensed because this is the the biggest problem I find in mm. urban is that it's it's a lot more aggressive than it has to be and so like me as a follower sometimes I get like a cramp in mm. my right arm because they're like uh, tensed like putting tension yeah and all you have the to time. match that tension exactly so I always have to match that tension to be able to follow. But the thing is, like, of course you should have some tension so you still have your frame. Like, there is there is no problem with that. But uh, my the problem gets to, like, when I have to put the same amount of pressure, like, and it even sometimes um, becomes unclear what you want to lead because you're pushing all the time. So mm-hmm. when you then want to block or want to, like, block, uh, block and, um, sorry, isolate something or move something, accelerate something, then it, it's more unclear because there's no contrast exactly. between your pressure. So this is obviously uh, specifically for Urban Kiss then. But that is a that is a tip that I really think should be brought up uh, during classes. Um, and second of all, I mean, uh, <laughs> in a contrast to that, mm-hmm. uh, dare to use more connection with your chest, no mm. matter your style. Like, try to use your leading with your, like, try to use your chest with your leading more. And um, and not, don't just rely on your arms and, like, doing everything outside your, mm-hmm. your, your rib cage. But, like, try to, try to lead more like that. And, like I say, for both followers and leaders, like, you don't have to take giant steps to be having, like, a nice dancing uh, because less is more that's my opinion anyway but everybody has different style (laughs) yeah definitely but i think it's like like if you're dancing kizomba until eight o'clock in the morning the less energy you use in your frame like the the better you have and then let's say you're dancing till 8 a.m friday saturday and sunday night so like you want to conserve your energy and like your muscles and and things like that so it's good to have that contrast when you want to be smooth Mm -hmm. and then also the energy of the song like if you're dancing like a a silky smooth mika mendez song you don't have to have that much pressure versus if you're doing something a little bit more upbeat you. you know so yeah excellent advice and that comes to the yeah and that comes to the other point like please try just to listen to the music like don't be uh, like all about like trying to impress mm-hmm. and just coming up with as many steps as possible and this is for all dances obviously like salsa bachata kizomba doesn't matter but like try to actually in kizomba it's even more important because we have such uh, 
different music like there's so like different kinds of mm-hmm. like we have the romantic kind and the Mika Mendes kind and like the traditional kind mm-hmm. and then we have like Tarasha and we mm-hmm. have like we have so much many elements in Kizomba so try to like really listen to the music and yeah go go with the go with the flow <laughs> yeah so to hey, say. definitely um, yeah excellent mm-hmm. advice excellent thank you for that and i hope the <laughs> our audience enjoyed that I advice yeah i hope you're not too mad at me guys <laughs> no i think it's important for the guys to feel to feel that feedback one thing i see in my workshops all the guys all the time yeah to the fellas is that like your path to becoming a really badass lead is listening to the followers that you're dancing with because i can yeah. show you all the steps in the world but until i feel it or you get like a yeah. thumbs up from a follow who's feeling your follow and she knows like how to help you like polish because sometimes yeah. you carry attention in, in, in one arm or, you know, have your balance or you're taking her mm-hmm. off your axis. And sometimes mm-hmm. you're just not aware of those little subtleties that can make a world of a difference in your dance. Yeah. You know? Yeah, that is so true. That is very true. And also, I mean, the difficult part with this is like, it's just as kissing. <laughs> and it's like you would you will never know how it is to kiss yourself and you will never know how it is to dance with yourself. Mm-hmm. Like so it's it's hard to have that kind of like insight, but it's so important that you keep that, you know, like um reflection like uh oh, how do you say it? I don't even know the word. Self-awareness. Uh, but like the yeah, self-awareness. Thank you. Uh that you keep that self-awareness with you like try to always be your own like uh, reference and try to be like okay how can I make this better uh, how come I have this problem not with only this girl but with every girl uh, or I mean this as a leader but also as a follower and I, I and I talk about myself um, in this too like and with myself like how come I have this problem what can I do better what can I what can I do less of what can I do more of so it's always like no matter the position you have it's always uh, like in dancing or as a teacher, or like always remain a student, um, and always like stay humble with yourself, and mm-hmm. and keep keep learning and and uh, keep your process ongoing. Yeah, definitely. Awesome, 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 yeah. awesome. All right, mm-hmm. so um, we're close to the end of 2017 already, which has been a crazy year. Um, yes. It's gone by so fast. I saw you at the beginning of this. Yeah, it's, it's been too long. But I'm going to see you again yeah. in February. So yeah. uh, we're going to dance again for sure. But um, for sure. I wanted to open up the platform to you to see if you had any exciting plans or projects for 2018 that you'd like to share with everyone. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, uh, I have some secrets, too. So I'm not going to reveal <laughs> too much. But, uh, I mean, in 2018, my year will actually start kind of cool. I will go to Chile in February. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm kind of excited about that. Uh, i never been there. i never actually been to South America. Me neither. It's uh, on my list. Wow. Yeah. It's so funny because I've been to, like, every other continent, but yeah. not South America. So, uh, yeah, I'm excited about that. And um, I might uh, go to Oman also. Like, this is one of other places. Like, I mm-hmm. didn't even know that it was a country. But mm-hmm. excited about that. But, yeah, so I have some exciting things going on. Um, nice. And, yeah, my focus is, like, to... Uh, I'm, I'm still alone. I'm not in a partnership. So, um, uh I'm well my goal for 2018 is to um find the right one (laughs) and (laughs) yeah and uh yeah just continue and create something special and continue the way that it's been going like it's been so much fun and I'm just enjoying the ride so far so yeah Definitely, definitely. So on the note of you being alone and for the guys, we're talking about alone in the dance world, not romantically. (laughs) Are you there? Yes. Can you hear me? Yeah. It it got cut off. Sorry. Yeah. It's okay. Wait. I don't know if you heard me or not. Um, I can hear you now, but I didn't hear you before. It did. It did. It did block out a little bit. It did cut off. Okay. Mm -hmm. But I can start the question again. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no problem. problem. It was a call on the other line. So uh, okay. No problem. Anyway. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, <laughs> on that note of you being alone 
guys were talking about in the dance partnership yeah <laughs> yeah um in 2017 i'm not alone it's I, i'm i'm with myself <laughs> yeah i should say that i'm mm-hmm. not lonely i'm alone <laughs> exactly yeah <laughs> well we've so we've seen a lot of kizomba breakups this year in 2017 um mm-hmm. so and then you were also involved in one as well so i was curious if you had any insights or feelings that you'd like to share with the people and why we seem to have this trend of a lot of mm-hmm. Kizomba yeah. couples breaking up. Yeah. Um, well, you know, it's it's really hard to say what is the reason for. Like, I don't think there is like one reason for all of them. Um, but more to say that like a lot of these couples um, that has been uh, going their separate ways now, they have been couples for a couple of years, like like a longer period of time. Um, like for example, uh, Tony Pirata and Sophie Fox, mm-hmm. um, uh, and such. And, um, I mean, I guess, you know, just as normal r- relationships where your boyfriend or girlfriend or whatever you are, friends or not friends, uh, you change as a person. And I think, um, it could it could be numerous of reasons. Mm-hmm. Of course, there are the there are the obvious fact that people always uh, suspect like oh maybe they had problems or whatever. But I think more than that, it can also there's so many aspects in this. Like it can be uh, just going through like different periods of life, like mm-hmm. where you. I mean, most most of us are between like. Uh, 20 and 30 years old or mm-hmm. like 25 and 35 and I mean a lot happens during that age like if you want to settle down and have kids or you know you have a boyfriend back in your country or you want to I don't know pet your dog more yeah, I mean it can be sure. whatever reason and I feel and sometimes I, people forget that like the dancers that they see as like the stars of the festivals and things like that yeah. are normal people and sometimes they exactly. do have other they do all have yeah, different all chapters have that you go through in life you know and we have family yeah we have like and yeah that's a, such a good point and I and I think people should keep that in mind and I think people do but I mean, with all the gossip and everything mm-hmm. else, it's it's always easier for rumors to start with, oh, why, but when and where and how. So, but I mean, I, I guess there are, uh, everybody has their own reasons and um, that it just happened in 2016 and 17. I'm not sure, but I think it's, it's, uh, it's been a lot of changement, like in the Kizamba world too. Mm-hmm. Um, and that uh, it's just, I mean, in the Kizomba world with urban kids, with uh, and to different countries and such, it can be numerous of reasons. But yeah, I mean, in my case, uh, I just, you know, I find it really important that you have the same kind of vision so you work towards the same kind of goals yeah makes and sense. that is yeah so so not just like oh the first impression oh we dance good together we look good together we teach good together that is not the only criteria that are um that are mandatory in a partnership but also that you're moving towards the same direction or for uh, for to have like a longer like a long long-lasting relationship both as friends and as dance partners so yeah thank you so much for sharing that that. would be my answer (laughs) yeah it's 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 something because it's a couple's dance so you have like the lead and the follow yeah and it's i mean i understand that people go through lives but it's just like the last six 2016 2017 you went through a lot so it'd be interesting to see like the future of like kizomba and and urban kids and as it starts to grow into 2018 and 19 and 20 you know like even taking a look at how the dance is changing like now we have tada show and all this kind of stuff it's just it's changing really really fast so it really it really is and growing mm -hmm. so Um, it'll be interesting to see how it how it all starts to to unfold it's becoming more competitive since it's growing so fast we we are not competitive but i mean 
it's a good thing. I mean, mm-hmm. it's getting so it's growing so fast the Kizamba community that we have these like really talented dancers that come up from from everywhere. Yeah, uh, and DJs. Like Kizamba's and DJs. Yeah, definitely. Like it, the whole community is growing so fast that um it's not like it was in the beginning when it was only like, you know, mm-hmm. like a few like a handful of teachers, you know, going around um teaching uh but now there are so many and it comes good and bad with that because you know now it's like people take a few classes and boom they're a teacher yeah it's and it's the same problem with the salsa and bachata and all of those uh, dance styles uh or with any dance style in general i would say um but um yeah i mean i think it's really important to uh, to value still what to pay your dues so to say mm-hmm. um, and with this community growing so fast I think we all have our own responsibility in it to uh, to um, yeah create it and be in the process and moving it to the right way if, or towards the right direction if that yeah. makes sense yes it does. Um, yeah awesome well thank you so much for sharing that insight and your story and your advice and your <laughs> i guess yeah. upbringing and views and things like that I, like i said this is the, the reason for the podcast and why i'm trying to like just interview as many people as i can and then like people can find these and retrieve these even if it's like a year later two years later three years later you know um yeah. and then it's like if we like got together again the same time next year and they can give us an update of different things you know so it'll be good to kind of like follow that kind of role, you know, because it's, I think it's important to people to see that you're human and like you have a life and you have other things that you do outside yeah. of just it is, even though dance is like such a huge part of our lives, you know? Yeah. No. And that's, again, like I said in the beginning of this podcast, I think it's really cool that you bring these subjects up and also like bring out the persona, mm-hmm. uh, I guess, behind all these teachers and and artists and they're so great and so talented um and it's an honor to be be on your podcast and to to be sharing on my thoughts well i appreciate you. you being here <laughs> so to wrap up the podcast here um do you yeah. have any pieces of inspiration or motivation or something that has helped you stay motivated and inspired along your dance journey so yeah, far yeah i yeah, I thought of that, actually, since you asked me. Um, well, I always have a saying that I keep with me no matter what I do. And that is, it doesn't matter how slow you're going, just don't stop. Like, it doesn't matter how long something is taking you, but just as long as you don't give up and as long as you don't stop doing it, you will always be in some kind of process with it, like some kind of progress. So um, that is my that is my best advice. And that is something that I've kept with me with dancing when I when it has fe- felt like like where, what am I about to do now or mm-hmm. or at, at the worst times, I always feel like, you know what, it doesn't matter how how slow it's going. But just as you keep on moving, keep on swimming. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome piece of advice. And if somebody wanted to reach you on the interwebs, um, how can they reach yeah. you? Yeah, well, I have my Facebook page, uh, which is called Teresa Jimenez, um, and it's kind of confusing because my private profile is called the same. Mm-hmm. But uh, just make sure that you look that it's a page and not my profile. And I'll, I'll put a link I in the show my, notes for the people. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And then I have my Instagram. Um, which is like exploding right now, nice, <laughs> which is nice. so funny. Uh, and it's uh, Teresa Jimenez official, and like put in all together, so it's just one name. Okay. Um, Teresa Jimenez official, and then I have my Snapchat, mm-hmm. which is Teresitas with two A's at the end, so Teresita As. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> And yeah, that's about it. I think that's the social media I'm on, and I'll I'm posting everywhere. And so, yeah, just go ahead and follow me, and write me or talk to me, and invite me to a dance. 
mostly. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much for taking time out of your day, Teresa, and sharing your story with us. I really appreciate thank it. Thank you. Yeah. I and really appreciate, uh, again, being on here and sharing everything. For sure, for sure. Talking to you. <laughs> All right. Well, I hope to see you soon in Sweden. And we will. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Yeah, you too. All Thank right. you. <laughs> Thank you for checking out the Dance Your Heart on Fire podcast today. Be sure to check out neokizomba.com for links to everything that we chatted about today, as well as some awesome free resources to enhance your Kizomba journey. Si 